Good morning, everyone. We do have folks joining us from all around the world, so it could be a different time for you. We're so glad you're here. We're just letting all the different participants join us from all around the world. We'll be starting soon. Hello, and thank you for being here. We'll be starting shortly. All right, there's a few more people popping in, but we're going to get started. Thank you all for joining us today. Welcome to Learn to Draw Plants with John Muir Laws. We are so glad you are joining us today. My name is Beth Kelly Galogali, and I'm the founding director of the Wild Wonder Foundation, which is hosting this class today. The Wild Wonder Foundation is dedicated to encouraging nature connection and conservation through attention, curiosity, art, science, and community. We strive to make nature and nature journaling accessible to everyone by sponsoring our annual Wild Wonder Nature Journaling Conference, as well as other events, educational workshops, field trips, teacher trainings, retreats, exhibits, grants, and other activities and projects in support of our mission, like this class today. You can learn more about our work at wildwonder.org. We are grateful to today's teacher, John Muir Laws, who is an award-winning author, writer, illustrator, and educator with nearly four decades of teaching experience. Jack is the co-founder and president of the Wild Wonder Foundation, and he is the author and illustrator of several books, including The Law's Guide to Nature Drawing and Journaling, The Law's Guide to Drawing Birds, The Law's Sketchbook, and others. He is donating his time to teach today's class. Thank you, Jack. A few notes before we begin. This class will be recorded and you will receive an email with the link to the recording within about a week. I want to thank Brooke and Avea who are helping backstage with class management. Because this is a webinar, your camera and mic are disabled. We will take a quick break today at 11 o'clock thereabouts. If you have questions during the event, please use the Q&A feature to ask questions and we will get to as many of them as we can, either answering using the Q&A or um, we will ask them of Jack live. We'd love to see your drawings and your notes from today's class. Please share them with us on Instagram and Facebook. You can use the hashtag Wild Wonder Foundation and tag us at Wild Wonder Foundation. And we'll be sharing some of those through our social media as well. So now sit back or sit forward, relax, and I hope you enjoy this class with John Muir Laws. I will now hand it over to you. Hello, wonderful wild people. Um, I'm John Muir Laws and everybody calls me Jack because Jack is just so much shorter than John. And I'm really delighted that you're all with us here today. Thank you so much for your support of the Wild Wonder Foundation. We are already doing some really, really exciting things with this foundation and your support makes that possible. Look for more shenanigans to come. Today, what I want to do is to unpack a system for drawing plants and flowers. And I've been thinking a lot about this and I've taught about it in the past, but there are several pieces that didn't quite click together. So what I've been thinking about is those little pieces and how they kind of interlock. And so there are there are two kind of ways we're going to be playing today. One is we want to think about we want to think about the mental model that we have of 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 how leaves and petals and flowers look. And then the flip side of that 
is, and what we're going to be trying to do is to take that mental model, that map that we have of the geometries and the relationships between things, and we're going to tweak it a little bit to make it a little bit more practical and useful. Um, and then what we're also going to be doing is looking at how can we, when we're not thinking about kind of the, there's the flower in your brain. And if your brain flower is different than real flowers, what we tend to often do is to draw our brain flower, to draw the flower that is in your head. And, um, and that kind of, if that, if that mental model is not correct, then it keeps popping up and messing with you as you're trying to make your marks. The other thing is how do we actually look at the real flower? See, there's the model, the flower in your head, and then there's the real flower that's sitting in front of you. And somehow you've got to get those to connect and to kind of end up on the paper. How do we look at the flower in front of us to make it even more useful? Because there's a lot of confusing information that comes at us. And, um, how can we intentionally look at the flower in a way that helps us take that flower, kind of have it bounce off our mental map and come out on the page in a way that looks like that flower and is faster and easy to do. Um, so if we're not really aware of our own mental models of how the flower in our head looks, it can really come up and bite us. So what we're going to do is I'm going to ask you at home, um, I'm going to ask everybody to um, imagine that there is a leaf like this one in front of you, and it's symmetrical. And what I want you to do is draw how you would imagine that that leaf would look if it were tilted towards you, if you don't look at any models, tilted towards you and then pointed out over your right shoulder. So it's tilted towards you and at an angle like this. So it's not pointing straight towards you, it's not pointing straight towards the side. It's at a 45 degree angle, kind of coming out, you're kind of looking down on this and it's pointing up towards your right shoulder. And if you're going like, uh, I have no idea what you're talking about, this is, this is okay. If, you, if this does make sense, if this, if this challenge, if this first challenge makes sense, draw how you think that's going to look. Because what this does is helps us realize where you're starting. What is your understanding of these geometries? Don't look at any reference material. And while other people are doing that, um, we're going to put into the chat a download that um, most people probably already have printed out. Um, it has some models of, um, of, of, of plant shapes. I'm going to be using those in this workshop, and also we get to play with those after this workshop. If you don't have it right now, um, you're still going to be okay because I'm going to be projecting things and sort of showing you. But sometimes for a lot of these things, it's really cool to have your own model in your hand. So if you do have access to kind of print, print that out. Um, and um, don't mind a little bit of scampering this morning if you haven't done it already. That's great. Um, what you're going to want to do is to, to take those um, and to cut them out around the outside um, edges, you'll, you'll end up with um, several, several things. You're going to end up with, with leaves. You're going to end up with a flower. You're going to end up with a psychedelic flower model, and we'll be showing you kind of how to assemble that. So these ones you want to keep flat, we'll kind of assemble this one together later. All right. Um, if you don't have these, you're still going to be okay, but you definitely will want them later on to, to play with. So now you should have this, this, um, this, this flower model. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a triangle. And this is, I took a square post-it note. I cut this in half, right? 
and um, I um, I um, am going to um, we're going to take this and we're just going to rotate this little triangle around in several different directions and we're going to notice what happens and I think that this is this is really this is this is the this is the tip of the spear that's going to help you draw your leaves and help you draw your flowers and so you can think of this as being say the triangle at the tip of a flower you can think of this as being the triangle at the tip of a leaf and it's right up here at the tip that a whole bunch of crazy shenanigans are going to happen and so that's why simplifying simplifying the whole leaf to just a triangle at the start is really 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 useful let's bounce over to a alternate screen and i'm going to bounce to an alternate microphone i want to check with my moderators and make sure that i am still easily heard i can hear you jack thank you all right so here is here is my say hello to my little friend the triangle um so i'm going to get my triangle friend to come off here and what I want you to do is just to, yes, draw this shape. It is an isosceles right triangle. So there's a 90 degree corner up here. And we have a line that comes through the middle of it. And there's a line across the back. Oh, I didn't make my isosceles very isosceles, did I? Nope. There we go. So there are two things that we want to kind of keep our, our, our tabs on. I'm still not getting my proportions right here. Well, one of them is proportions. Um, if I draw this correctly, I, I should end up with something where this side is the, it's the same shape as this side. It will also be a right triangle, no longer an isosceles right triangle, but this side will be the same shape. So I have symmetry. This side is the same as this side. And I want to think of the proportions of how big are those sides. And here they are, they're the same. So there's, there's my first, my first diagram. And see, the problem is that if I have this shape here, my brain will tell me that my brain will sort of see this this symmetry and it will want to maintain that symmetry no matter what right so um the um so here's check this out if i tilt my flower oh come on help me out here come on there you go there we are if i take this and i tilt my leaf up let me get this so it points right towards the camera notice that the shape of uh this is bent a little bit flatten this out there we go the shape of my triangle has changed it is no longer a right triangle this corner here is now more than 90 degrees. My brain knows that it's the same shape, but I actually now have a scalene um, right triangle here, right? I mean, not a scalene triangle, and, 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 and a, uh, what is that, an obtuse. So I, I, I have more than... This angle now is more than 90 degrees. See, I've got more than 90 degrees here. And if, and depending on, can get that angle to be even more open. Ooh. 
my, my brain wants to, to, is going to tend to when I'm looking at a three dimensional shape, and I know that that's a right angle, my brain is going to tend to want to draw that as a right angle. And so I'm fighting against this mental plan that my brain has. Um, let's now, I'm now going to take this and I'm going to keep it this way, but I'm going to rotate it in this direction. And look at what happened to my triangle. Look at what happened to my little right triangle. It's still an isosceles triangle, right? But look at it. It's now this sharp arrowhead shape. Right? I've got this really sharp arrowhead shape. And it's still symmetrical. My two sides are the same. But it is an isosceles acute an acute isosceles triangle. Wow. Isosceles again, meaning that this side is the same length as this side. Interesting. Now, <clears throat> this, this is something that I know everybody, we, we probably already all knew this. But the, the reason I'm bringing this up and kind of belaboring this at the point, at the start, is that our brains are going to tend to want to keep this symmetry, where this side is the same as this side, this length is the same as this length, this is the same as this. Right? Your brain is going to want to keep that because our original shape has that going on in it. Now here is where things start to get weird. Because remember, um, at the start, I said that your imaginary leaf that you were going to draw was going to be pointing out at some angle over your shoulder. Let's take this. I'm going to tilt up. I'm going to tilt away. And what I'm going to do is I am going to change this. So my triangle is now tracking off in this direction, going over your left shoulder. And I want you to look at the length of this side and the length of this side. I know, right? <laughs> See, this is where things are going to, this is where weirdness starts. And if we can under, wrap our head around it on the triangle, when we get to the leaf, we're going to have a fighting chance, right? So look at the length of this side. And then look at the shape of this side versus this side. Oh, wow, they're totally different. The proportions of those two sides are totally different. The lengths of the sides. Symmetry is blown out the window. So what I'm looking at here, when I tilt it up to the side like this, is I have, I have a short, short side, and I have a crazy long side. And then those make a big triangle. And where is this little line going? It is starting here, and it's not coming halfway through this. It's coming up closer to here. Oh, man. This length over here, I'm seeing that is shorter as the one that's over there. Ah! Oh, my goodness. Look what happened to all that beautiful symmetry. Oh, man. That's crazy. That's crazy. And it's counterintuitive. And so it really helps to, like if you drew on your leaf, the tip of your leaf, if it still is symmetrical going over your shoulder, 
then that's your mental model. And see, for me, my mental model is my brain wants to keep this whole thing symmetrical. Drink of water happening right now. Mm, water is good. So realize that we have this idea in our head of how this should look. And reality is going to do something different. Now look at this. I mean, it's a full on almost equilateral triangle over on this side and a big scalene, each angle different over on this side. Wait, what? That's crazy. That's crazy. We've got a triangle that's doing something like I've got a side and a side and a side. And then what are we going to do? We're going to have a point that's way down here. Nah. Can it do that? Well, yeah, it just did. It just did. So something that we were, uh, we're we, it's really important for us to realize is that as we're drawing leaves, unless we are only drawing leaves in this orientation, look straight down on this leaf, right? If I'm doing that, I don't have to worry about this. If I am only tilting it in this axis, actually, let's, Let's not take my word for that. Let's bring in, let's bring in the leaf model. Here comes the leaf model. So look at it this way. If I'm only tilting the leaf up towards you here, my symmetry is maintained. Stick there. So this is this leaf is symmetrical. Notice that I want you to for everybody take a look at how sharply tipped this is and the length of it. As I rock it up towards you, you can look at the one on your screen or the one in your hand. What I'm seeing is that it is not as sharp as it was. Oh, hey, Jack, could you please um, move your page over a little? So oh, can... yes. Thank, Thank you, Ve. It's not as sharp as it was, but the whole business is still perfectly symmetrical. Similarly, if I take it and predict what you're going to see if you rotate it in this axis. So if I keep it flat, but I spin it like it is on a grill. How is that shape going to change? Were you right? Here, it got sharper over here. It kept its length. All right. So I've got my central axis and it's skinnier. But it is still symmetrical. So there are two rotations that allow me to keep my symmetry on my leaf. Those are when I rotate it straight up tip towards me, or if I put it on the grill and turn the oh, Jack, I think you just muted yourself. Yes, I actually had to blow my nose behind the scenes and thought that not everybody wanted to hear that. No worries. <laughs> it's, I'm sort of realizing Zoom etiquette, you kind of cover the cough in a different way and things like that. So so these, these, these two rotations here, when I rock it up towards you, that behaves the way that our brain wants it to. And similarly like this, right? Here it gets sharper, but the symmetry is maintained. But all I have to do is rock it up, and then I'm going to also put some tilt in it and look at what starts to happen here. Oh my word. Look at this side and this side. 
Look at that. See, remember when we had those two sides being different lengths? That's where these, this is something I've recently added to my little leaf model. If you played with these before, you now see there are these horizontal lines. These help you keep track of the triangle. So let's go first, second, third line down. This was at 90 degrees to that central, central midrib. Let's call this, this section right up here. That's the triangle we're going to be looking at. You have a short side. You have a long side. Not only that, one side here looks straight. And the other side looks curved. Right? I really distinctly see a curve on this side over here. I don't distinctly see a curve over here. What? So, so if I'm putting that on this little diagram over here, I'm saying that on this side on a leaf, I'm going to see a curve. And on this side over here, it's going to look straight. So I've got a shorter, more curved side. Now, there's also a weird thing going on on the, let's look at the, 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 the sticky outiness of the leaf. So, how far from the midrib does it stick out? Notice that on this side here, it is keeping really close, and on this side, it's sticking out. Now, look at the base of the leaf. Which side is sticking out more? I've got this big sag over here, and it's trimmed over here. But over here, I've got sag over here, and trimmed over here. This is, to me, so counterintuitive. My brain does not, my mental model does not want to accept that this is what the leaf is doing. But what I've got going on here, if this is my, the central axis of my leaf, I have a short side. Let's put in a little diagonal here. I have a long side. I have this short side is going to be curving more. This long side isn't. <clears throat> I then towards the base here, I have kind of, I have a, um, I have a, um, a, a flatter, less bulby side, and I have a more of a sticking out side over here. So I'm going to stick out more here. I'm going to stick more out more up here. This leaf is not, what I'm trying to do is by kind of emphasizing these points, we're going to slowly kind of replace the mental model of what the leaf should be doing in our head with this new plan. So as we're going along, we want to be diagramming these leaves. If you have one in your hand, um, or I'm, if you don't have one, I'm going to just turn this to another angle. And what I'd like you to do is to draw, draw the leaf as you see it on the screen. Or if you have one in your hand, right? Take your leaf, close one eye. So when you're doing this on the camera, it's easy because the camera has turned this into a two-dimensional view. But what you want to do <clears throat> is to, when you're looking at this in real life, is close one eye because your right eye and your left eye on something that is held in your hand that's this big will see it from slightly different angles, actually dramatically different angles. Just switch back and forth between your two eyes for a minute and you'll see it kind of going left, right, left, right, right. And um, you just want to pick one of those views, close your eye, hold your thing at an angle. A good way to do it at the start is just take it, take your leaf and tilt it. So you're going to, to, to tilt it up towards you, you're going to hold it at an angle and then put it at at some point. Try for, for most extreme results, take one of these edges and get it so that that edge is pointing towards you. You see how this this uh, edge over here, this edge is kind of pointing towards the viewer. 
get one that's sort of pointing towards you and you'll see you really get these these sort of strange views dramatically while you're playing with that i am going to queue up in the background a really interesting demonstration Avea and Brooke, are you folks seeing um, a screen with two leaf diagrams on it? Yes. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. All right. What I'm going to do is um, I, I, had, I, I did all the kind of work behind this, and then I realized that to understand what I'm doing, it really helps me kind of see it. So I'm going to just, um, with uh, this is a, a, a file that I've created in Adobe Illustrator. And what I'm going to do is in front of you, I'm going to modify this file. And just to sort of show you how these geometries work, because I think actually seeing, um, seeing this happen is really, really fun, right? So I am going to hide my meeting controls. There I go. Let's zoom out. I'm going to select these and I'm going to copy it and paste it. And on this copy and pasted one, I'm going to just rotate it a little bit. And I'm going to put that up there. Now, I'm going to copy this rotated one and I'm going to rotate it a little bit. Whoopsie. I'm going to rotate it a little bit more. And then I'm going to take that and I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste it and I'm going to rotate it. Oops. I'm going to rotate it even more. Let's get that one up. Nice. And then I'm going to take that one and I am going to rotate it one last time so that it is roughly 90 degrees. All right, so you see all I've done is I've just got this same thing and um, I'm now going to select them all and just because I'm a neat freak, I'm going to align their centers. There we are. And why don't we There we go. So here are these leaves and I've just rotated them a little bit. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all of those and I'm going to paste them right down below. But this time I'm going to take this smorgasbord of, um, of, of, of leaves and I am just going to vertically squish it. See what I'm doing is I'm taking all of these and I'm just vertically, I can make them stretched out, I can make them skinnier. I'm going to take them and let's make them skinnier. I'm going to take and copy that and let's take that one more time and make it skinnier. You see what I'm doing here? All I'm doing is I'm just changing the vertical axis on these shapes. And there we have it. Right? Let's take this row here and just bring them down a little bit. Now, let's look at these and figure out where on them the surprises are really happening. So notice over here <clears throat> um, on, uh, I'm gonna just take this top row, I'm gonna move it over a little bit so everything's lined up more symmetrically, there we are. So what I noticed that over on the left row, this is behaving the way I think it should. 
Notice that down here on this bottom one, it looks a little bit too wide. That's an optical illusion. The reason it looks a little bit too wide is an optical illusion. And what that is, is that the proportions of the top one are squished. But if you were to draw, actually, I can get in here and draw a vertical line. So look at this. I'm going to draw a vertical line right down here from the side of this. And the um, if I line all of these objects up, let's kind of move this over the chest. Synergy. You'll see that. Yeah, there, there's my vertical line. Oh, I don't know what I just did. Why did everybody go gray? Stop being gray. Well, anyway, it's gray. Um, so look at this. It didn't get wider. It did not get wider. There. We're now no longer gray. Um, so it did not get wider. It is the same width as this one. It just appears to be a little bit wider. That's kind of weird, but it is not as weird. And also look over here on the right. So this one here, it might appear, it doesn't, this one looks more like it got wider. This one doesn't really look like it got longer to me, but it might to you for the same reasons. It did not get longer. But notice this one definitely got sharper pointed. This one definitely over on the left got less pointed, less pointed over here. And actually, since I'm over here at this other computer, I am going to bounce over to my Zoom. Uh, oh, I, I, um, Van, can I still be heard clearly? Yes, I can still hear you. OK, so I'm, I'm not right in front of the other microphone right now. I'll just speak in a loud voice. But look, at, so so these ones, they're behaving with with the exception of this does look a little bit wider. Notice that it does not appear as sharp. The curves are more accentuated. So I'm seeing this looks more curvy. The curves are more accentuated. So this looks more gradual. This is very abrupt. This one looks less curvy. This one over on the right looks less curvy. But the symmetries on the sides are maintained. Not the case with all the ones in the middle. So let's just check that out for a second um look at look at look at uh, over here on this 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 second to right column um it's subtle but it's still happening the ones where it's the most dramatic is right here kind of close to close to vertical look at this angle in here where i've got these my right side and my left side clearly doing different things it also is out here. Once I get more flattened, I kind it's not as in my face. But right in here, wow, this effect is really strong. The other thing that is surprising, and let's zoom in here, is let's just kind of take this moment. <coughs> Look, look at how surprising these geometries are. Two things. One, we've got my bulby side, uh, bulby and smooth, and then bulby and smooth, right? Bulby to straight, bulby to straight. So those are in these sort of yin yang flipped zones. That's weird. That's really counterintuitive. Here's the other really weird thing about this is look at what's happening with these leaf veins and the apparent spacing between them. Were the, what, what did they look like before? What were they looking like before? Let's just kind of go back for a second. Um, shift, whoop, actually, there we go. Remember, these veins were starting off symmetrical. These veins were symmetrical all through our top row. And now we're down here. What? That's weird, right? So I'm pointing these out to you 
because they're counterintuitive to me. My brain doesn't want to accept that that is what these veins are doing. But I can see it. And so this tells me that when I'm foreshortening leaves, whether they're going away from me or towards me, I need to look for my bulby side and my straight side. I need to, and then look for that kind of doing the flip on it. I am now aware that my um, veins are going to be doing these weird things. This is what happens when I do this on Adobe Illustrator. Does the same thing happen when I'm looking at the real leaf? Let's find out. So here in space, look at that. Wow, wow, wow. So really let your brain absorb that this is different for me. I, I, maybe it's not for you, in which case you don't need the whole class, right? But for me, this is so counterintuitive. Look at the angle of these veins off that mid vein. These ones are coming up at a steeper, more acute angle. These ones wider, right? So you should be sketching this, diagramming this right now, kind of going, whoa, this is, this is different than if I were to have made this leaf up. If I were to have made this up, what would my brain have done, right? And, and so I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna put in, if I've got a central vein here, I have my bulby side out here and it's going to a flatter side, right? I have, I'm gonna scoop down here, bulby side here, and I've got a flatter side here. Whoa, oh, that's nuts. Oh, that's nuts. And veins, they're coming out at a more obtuse angle and they're widely spaced. Wow, okay. What about on the other side? Oh, they're coming up at an acute angle, a more of an acute angle, and they're more closely spaced. There is no way my brain would have made that up, right? That is so different than what is going on in my brain. And you're thinking like, oh no, now I have to memorize all these things. You actually don't. You actually don't, but you do want, and you'll see why in a moment. Um, if, if, if you're going to be drawing leaves out of your imagination, yes, you're going to have to memorize this, right? Um, if you're looking at a plant with real leaves on it, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be looking at, at the leaf and you're going to be saying like, oh, there's my bulby side. There's my bulby side here. Here's my skinny side. Here's my skinny side. You're going to know, you're going to say like, where are these different zones on my real leaf? And you can look at your real leaf and say like, I expect my vein angles to be different and differently spaced on either side of this. Let's see what they're doing, right? Even if you've totally forgotten, you get to look at the leaf. And if you're looking at a leaf, you say, I can't really see the veins. Oh, no, don't worry. That means you don't have to draw the veins. You can't see the veins. Don't draw the veins. No problem. Right. But if you can, they'll say, like, look, we're close together over here. Right. And we're widely spaced and we're coming out more straight towards you. We're at an acute angle. We're not. Right. And so you just listen to the leaf. Listen to the leaf and the leaf will tell you. But again, if you can't see the veins on your leaf, you don't have to draw the veins on your leaf. <sighs> Water break. This is the gold of this model. So what I suggest people do is you take, you take these models and you just keep them around in your house and you turn them at weird angles. This one is really useful for understanding, um, for understanding the vein angles, right? <clears throat> 
This one here probably thinks the song is about it. Now, this one here is really useful for looking at where it's wide and where it's not and how the angles of things has changed. And this one also has printed on it if something has um, has uh, parallel veins, we put those in there. So um, not to be, um, you know, just dicot exclusivists here. The Vea, that's for you, right? Um, the, uh, so um, these are two really useful things. And you just hold it at different angles and just look at them. First, see if you can notice it and then hold it with your non-dominant hand and draw it with the other. That's such a great way to kind of wrap your brain around these geometries. But wait, there's more. Because what many leaves, many leaves, if you look at them in cross section, make a V, right? So if your leaf makes a V in cross section, that changes things. And let's take a look at how that changes. When I look at the top on a V leaf, I have symmetry. I'm now just going to rotate this just in one axis in the easy axis and look at what happens. Oh! My two sides, even though I'm just, I'm not even really, I'm not pointing this over your shoulder, I'm just spinning it. I'm just spinning it. I now have asymmetrical sides. So mine is, whoop, all right? I have one side that is doing what I would expect it to do. My other side is foreshortened because it's tilted up towards me. If I tilt it, if I'm looking towards the other side, I'm more towards the underside of the leaf, I can get a view of this where I have that and that. Okay, but what happens? <laughs> you know where we're going. Are we gonna? Are we really gonna go there? Yeah, let's do that. All right. So now we're going to tilt this up, and we are going to. <clears throat> so now I have. I can see my bulby side on this side here. And I can see the opposite bulby side over here. Behind my view, this one is going down to a straight side over there, right? And what I, I want to start doing is I now have to start thinking of this as if it were made out of glass, where I have one side that is doing this, and my other side, it's intersecting here, and it's coming here to a point, and it's out to its widest point in here. My other side is doing something like this, and behind the scenes, it is then coming down to here. So it's got its big side and small side, and the one that's close to me has its small side and its big side. And I see this part sticking out over the far shoulder. Isn't that cool? So I still have these sort of strange, you know, big side here and had big side here, but now it's flipped up so that you're seeing part of this big side 
obscuring your view of what's happening on the other side. Wow. I'm going to tilt it up a little bit like this. In this view, remember, remember how we had um, when when we we're kind of tilt, tilted up like this before we had there was that big side over here that went small and then it was doing the opposite here. It had the long side here. So short side that goes up and then down and then this one had the long side and, to, and it had its down here. See, now we've tilted this even more and all of, so this one is still narrow through here, the close side, the white side, and we're seeing it, we're, we're seeing this big kind of accentu accentuated pooching out on the bottom. And the top side is going up to have its big point up there. Wow. See, this is this to me is so counterintuitive. If I were to sit down at my table, when I sit down at my table and I try to make this up, I can't really make these leaves up. But knowing that they do these weird fun things. Now, when I am looking at real leaves, I can break them down. I can notice it allows me like this having this this little point on the bottom of, I'm going to get one more little piece of blank paper here. Oh, the, the, the top side of the leaf feels right to me. But this bottom side of the leaf, this bottom side of the leaf that is coming down like this and really pooching out and then going like that, doesn't that feel wrong? It feels like, oh no, you drew this leaf wrong. But realizing that the angles are going to, that you're going to get more pooching out on this side, and that if I've taken an angle and I pointed that straight down towards you, um, I can get these, I'm getting all the curve that was in here on the bottom of my leaf, that's all being forced down into here from this perspective. All that curving that's what's making that happen so this model is gold there's one other but now what we're going to do is we're going to take <clears throat> we're going to take this model and we're going to apply it to a flower now what I want you to do is to think of each one of these petals around here just as a leaf pointing in different directions. The geometries on each one of these petals is going to be exactly like what we had before. So let's start without a tilt in it. Let's start just rocking this up towards you. And let's notice what happens here? This is just a quick message to let everyone know we'll have a break in about five minutes. Okay. So when I'm doing this, I'm going to rock this just a little bit more. This, actually, the way that I think will be easiest to show this is if I, I can now use, if I put it this way, I, we can use the terms top, bottom, up, down a little bit easier. There we are. So notice out here, everybody's symmetrical. I rock up towards you. Wow. Our symmetry is toast. Now, if I actually did it like this so that one petal is going up, maybe this is a good way to start. Notice the ones that go straight up and straight down. The symmetry still works. Those are symmetrical petals. The ones that are out on the sides, those are symmetrical. 
But look at the asymmetry in these two down here. Notice that there's a straight side here, and then there is a big curving side. There's a straight side and a curving side. I'm going to now rock this a little bit like this. And we're going to see those straights and curves all over the place. So notice on the inside here and on the inside here that these sides appear straighter to us. And notice that this side here and this side here appears more curvy. Huh. That's really, really weird. Right? Um, and we have the same thing going on out here. So if, if this was my more curvy side, um, I have... As I'm looking out here, it looks like I've got more of a curve coming down on the top and the bottom is straighter. The closer it gets, a pedal gets to being right, pointing out just more right and left. Notice like this one, this one is flatter, right? It, it, is, it is closer to um, 90 degrees. The more I tilt it up, its symmetry starts to break. So on ones that get close to vertical, I see symmetry. But out in here and out in here, in these quadrants, that's where my asymmetry is going to happen. So it is very often when people are drawing, of a flower right um, very often people are, 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 are drawing a flower um, you know let's take a look at this petal right over here um, what we tend to do is um, if that with my petal sticking out like this, I'm going to draw that petal symmetrically because my brain wants it to be symmetrical. But if I've got these patterns in my head, I know that this side is going to be more curvy and this one is going to be straighter. I can look for that on my um, on my petal. Down in here in the base, a lot of the the reverse curve is going to be hidden by in, in this case it's hidden by these sort of overlapping of these other petals. Um, so this pattern that we're seeing in the leaves applies into petals. It applies into anything that we see. One other kind of fun observation about this is that notice down here, my flower, all my petals are the same length. So now let's look, just look at the proportions of the petals. So if I draw a circle and I draw crosshairs through that circle, that puts my center of my flower here. That outside of the, the outside circle is going to help me see that this petal that is over here is going to be this big. And this petal over here, we're going to just go to that outside circle. So getting these petals to be the right, and I'm just sort of keeping them all kind of the same width and the same length. So drawing these sorts of petals in this straight view, that's easy. So again, just drew myself a circle. Look at the outside shape of this. And notice when I turn it up, that the center of this flower is now an ellipse. The out, this little oval, it's a little oval in the center here. And this outside edge is an oval. 
So when I'm drawing that, I'm drawing the outside edge as an oval and let's draw crosshairs through it and draw a little oval in the center. And just to get the direction of these petals, I'm going to draw kind of a, a I'm going to figure out that on the edge, there's one petal that starts here. I'm just going to lightly draw a line that goes to the center there. There's another one. This one here is starting somewhere up in here, right? And so if I draw a little line to the center of my flower, that's going to give me that one. There's another one that is starting down here. And I'll draw a little line out there. The next one on the top is starting somewhere over, this one was over here, this one is over here. I want you to notice that this space here is a lot wider, a lot longer than this space over here. Over here, my petals were this roughly the same distance apart. So again, my brain is wanting me to keep that symmetry. But here I've tilted it up, and now I've got a big space over here. This space is small because this edge is pointing towards you. That's foreshortened. This, you're seeing the long edge of this. It's not foreshortened. So here I see a big space. The closer that something is on the sides, the more I'm going to see it, um, the, the more that the spaces between them will appear close. Isn't that, that's a strange observation again. So down here, I've got, I've got two down here. I've got one about here and kind of widely spaced. Jack, I think it's time for us to take a short break. Whew. All right, I'm gonna suggest everybody take a quick bathroom break. We're gonna meet back here. We're gonna take five minutes. You might want to, um, you might want to get yourself a uh, uh, something to drink, um, but let's just do that. Thank you so much, Brooke. We'll see everybody back here in just a second.
Quick check, Brooke. Um, how much time, more time are we giving folks? I think our break has about two more minutes. Oh, okay. That's plenty of time. If you haven't done so yet, you can start cutting these things out. So for this, you're going to need a little piece of tape too. Foreshadowing. We turn this to a different angle. I want people to look for where you see asymmetries in the petals. And we're back. We're back, everybody. Hope that was a good break. Now, um, so what we had done is we we had taken this 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 little flower, and we had noticed that the spacing of these petals was not symmetrical. You can your mental map. Your brain wants to make everything symmetrical, but it's not going to be that way. All you have to do is tilt this thing and that symmetry is gone. But just think how easy it would be if you're on autopilot to draw in all these petals with the tips of them hitting the ring the same distance apart. Now, um, let's just take a look at a couple of individual petals down this one right here which is you right so notice that at the tip it has this this side of its tip this part is coming down and then it's bulging out here so it's bulge and then comes down meanwhile the other side is sliding back close and it's going to be bulging in here So that pedal is not symmetrical. 
This next one, as it's getting closer to being on the center line, is a little bit more symmetrical than this one was, but still, but still it's not. Because let's take a look at the, at the tip of it. Over here, we're coming down. And over here on the bottom, we're sliding out. So it's got a bulgy side on the top. And what are we doing here? We're coming in. Here we are. We have. And then this one, next one up here, because it is very, very close to um, being on the center line, this one looks pretty symmetrical, but it's also pretty skinny. Notice this one was wider than this one. And then this next one out here, it is going to be more slender. So I could draw it in perfectly symmetrically, or I could also say to myself, I'm going to expect more of a bulge on the underside on this side here. And if I look, I actually slightly see that, and then I can make this top edge straighter. And then what about here? I have my bulgy edge here. And I have my straighter edge here. So I'm going to come out and then it turns the corner. It's going to come down and it's going to turn the corner. That's wider. So the, the, the shapes that I'm putting in on either side of these petals or leaves are different. And um, somebody, I'm, I'm hoping at some point I get to the point where I can just sort of sit down and like, whoop, my, my, my pencil is making the lines and I'm kind of, uh, but for me at this point, I have to actually kind of slow down and block it in more and say like straight edge here. So I would first kind of block it in uh, with my non photo glue pencil or a light kind of drawing pencil and then come over that and say yes my petal has this shape right so for me at this point i'm really having to still first block it in and then i can Um, and, th and then I'll uh, come over that and make more of a definitive line. And I hope that at some point down the line, my brain is going to be able to have all of this internalized so much that I don't really have to do this. But I can get kind of a, then a, a sort of a, a smooth, nice looking line. Once I've got these decisions made in, You know, I can come over that with either a stronger line or another pen and be able to get something that looks like a you know smooth confident line but I really have to kind of um, the the angles that these will make right in here the triangle at the tip right I really want to pay attention to those so That's interesting. But wait, there's more. Because do you see the little dotted line? See that little dotted line on your flower model? Hey, what I'm going to do is invite you to get a pair of scissors and to snip that to the halfway point of the circle, not all the way through the circle. And get yourself a little piece of tape and what you're going to do is you're going to take this and overlap it so you see the tip of this petal i'm going to go one two petals over and i'm going to put that one on top of where that other one is two petals over and i pinch it down on the outside grab a little piece of tape 
Now, if you don't have yours at home at this point because you haven't printed that out, that's okay. You're going to be able to see this. Now, <clears throat> I have a six petal flower. And what I'm going to do, actually, I should do that with this one so that we're all using the same model. I'm going to go two over, one, two. If you haven't done yours yet, you can follow along with me. Get that looking nice on the inside. Keep it pinched down. Get yourself a little piece of tape. And what I want is this then to be a cone. And I'm going to take it and hold it so that when I look right down into it, you notice in this view, those petals are the same length and the tips are symmetrical. But what's fun with this cone is it like, remember back here on this thing, whenever I tip it, the center of that flower is still in the middle of the flowers. You notice as I'm tilting that, that center is staying in the center. Oh, yeah, that works. All right. Now it's getting shorter this way, but the distance between here and here is the same. The distance between here and here is the same. It's staying in the center of that flower. What's crazy about this is as I tilt it, look at what happens. Well, actually, I'm going to tilt this the opposite way. So I tilt it away from us. I'm going to hold it this way so we get there. We go. I'm going to tilt it away from us. Look at the length. Look at the length of the petal that is pointing down here and look at the length of the petal that is pointing up. Notice how they're the same. Look at that. This time it's not an optical illusion. That back petal actually did get slightly longer. That um, here it is foreshortened and I do this, it is no longer foreshortened. So the top petal actually did get slightly longer. Notice that the sharpness of the one on the bottom, look at how sharp it is. Watch what happens to its sharpness. Hmm. So it gets increasingly blunt or increasingly uh, less pointed, less sharply pointed as I tilt that up. Wow. And also notice the center of the flower. Here is in the center. What does it do as you tilt down? You can see the center of the flower drop. And once you get, it get lands on the edge like this, as it starts to go a little bit more, you notice that you also start to see the bottom of the flower on the underside. So there's a new set of geometries that are coming in here that we want to wrap our brains around. So the first is just that the 
as we do this, this with the center of that flower dropping, um, our petal lengths are going to change in interesting ways. Here, when I'm doing it kind of symmetrically, I've got two on the bottom. Look at how goofy these bottom two petals end up looking. Doesn't that look wrong? Notice that their long flat edge is pointing towards you and their curve bulge out edges are jumping up on the sides, making them look almost bean shaped. So the tip was here. As I rock this up, those two bottom petals are going to start to look wrong. And what I'm actually seeing on them is that I have a top edge like that and I have a bottom edge like that. So from the point right here, I have a flat bottom edge and I have a curved in top edge. What? Yeah, look at that. Look at how deep the groove is here and look at what happens to the groove between them here. See that flatten out? Oh, that's crazy. Now, and then look at the negative shape that is right here. Curvy on the bottom and then straight. Curvy on the bottom and then straight. So I'm seeing a line that is coming down like this, curvy on the bottom and then doing this. So I'm seeing this little shape that has a long edge and then I have this flattening thing coming out and then curving down like that. What? So again, in this little shape right here, right there, this negative shape between the petals, right where my finger is. Our brain wants the shape between the petals to do this. Not that. So if you were actually drawing a flower in this position, could you let, would you have the fortitude, the strength of character and will to actually draw that shape and let that mark come down on your paper. Notice that it just sort of feels, at least to me, it feels wrong. Whoa, whoa, really? I have, I'm, that's what I'm gonna draw? Okay. So, and now lastly, notice that the top edge of this is a circle. And as I tilt it, the top edge, it becomes an ellipse. Now, the middle of the flower is no longer in it, but just like this thing turned and it was an ellipse, this outside circle turns any turning circle, it's still going to be an ellipse. So that ellipse is really, really useful. It's just that, and here, if this is the center of my flower, my center is going to be somewhere on that, either above the curve, or if it's a steeper cone, it'll be below the curve. On that, depending on how steep my flower is, it could be like this and have my bottom down here. But what I won't see is a flower with the bottom here and still seeing part of my flower here. So I could see this view or get rid of that little spot. I could see this view but I'm not gonna see the middle of my flower here and the middle of my flower here because that flower has two middles. We don't play that. That's cubism and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're trying to do kind of representational art, we're gonna shy away from that. So, hmm. so what I am going to do is, where is, there you are, there's my little handle. I am going to turn this, oh, come on, tighten. So if we want to play with this flower, we have, we have an ellipse. We have down the center of our flower, we have another ellipse of the same shape here and the towards the bottom of that down here is the bottom of my flower that's where all my petals are going to aim 
I have coming off to here and coming off to here, kind of a wide space because this is the non foreshortened edge. <clears throat> I have another one coming off here. That's what I'm just sort of figuring out where the tips of my petals are going. And then another one off there and another one off there. And my bottom petal is going to come out and then it turns down towards me because that's its bulby side all foreshortened and then I have my flat side and it's going to be a very very open uncomfortably open negative space between those two petals right in there and then I'm going to have this side come out and curve down towards you. So the bulby side out there away from me. On this little petal that is coming up here, I have my straighter side towards me. So I want to look at what is this shape of this, what is this negative shape doing here? And then on the far side, there is bulby. Now, this one here looks very symmetrical, and this one um, here looks, these next two look very symmetrical because I'm looking at those at less of an angle. And so here is a petal coming down in there, and I want to look at what is this negative shape between these two. And I have another petal coming down in here. And what is the negative shape between these two? It's going to here, it's going to come up and then take over. And so this gives me my bulby side here and a straighter side. And remember, each one of these petals is pointing down, if you took its center line, to that spot right there in the bottom. And if I tilt it more so that I see some of the bottom of the flower. Then I have this outer ellipse and I have the bottom of my flower down here. So that means my my bottom, my all my petals are going to point to that point right there. That's my target. Before this was my target. Now that's my target. So I've got a petal that is coming up in here and I've got a petal that's coming up uh, more over here on this outside rim. I have another one. Look at how close these two petal tips are. This one here and this one here. So these two over here. Got a tip here, and I've got a tip right in there. Ah, huh. that's close. These ones are far. I have a tip here, and I've got another tip here. And I have a tip out here, and I have a tip out here. Now, for this kind of a view, I find it really, really, really helps to just lightly draw lines from those outside edges to the center of your cone. That's what the middle of my flowers are going to do, and just light little ghost line there. And then when you draw these in, draw the edge that is closer to you before you draw the ones in the background, because you're going to stop drawing those ones in the back once they get... Um, uh, once they over uh, are overlapped by the ones in the front. So here's uh, my straighter edge on this, and then here's my curvy edge. Excuse me, Jack. Yes. Two things. The first one is we have about 30 minutes left in today's class. The second is, would you like us to save about 10 minutes for Q&A? Sure. The very end? 
All right, we'll get back to you then. Thanks. Straighter edge and then my curvy edge started in there. And so these ones that are behind it, I'm going to bring these down in here. These ones here are more symmetrical. I like looking at what is this negative shape in here. But each one of these flowers comes down to this point here. Each one, that's where the target for those petals is. But wait, there's more. The final little piece of this is that these geometries really help us kind of get, <clears throat> get these geometries help us see what, um, what we're looking at. But what's, what's, what's different, where is my, no? The final little piece of this is that not all leaves are flat. A bunch of leaves are curved. Now, the paper model, can, there's one thing it cannot do. Um, a paper model cannot give you a curve and a V at the same time. If you're really good at origami, teach me how to do that. Um, but generally speaking, our paper model is going to be either be flat with the V or, or flat or with the V, or I can put the curve in it. So if I just take my paper model and I'm going to lightly curl it like this. <clears throat> I have a new little set of geometry of geometries that appears for me. And let's take a look at how to think about this. Jack? Yes. Could you possibly flip to a new page and just draw slightly larger? Oh, um, for this idea. next thing, because it's a, when you get a lot of drawings on one page, it's a little bit harder to see what's going on. Thank you. Second. I move my uh, camera a little bit closer to, and I'm going to see if this also helps. So let's also kind of zoom down. All right. So the thing that's cool about getting a um, this curl is that now you get all these positions where you'll see the top edge and the bottom edge of your leaf simultaneously. And so um, with this, um, here, here we go. We still have, there's still kind of, let's take a look at some of the geometries that are happening in here. Um, remember this white edge at this angle was our side that was flattened on this side and it was bulgy over here. So you can still see on this far side here, this side coming in flattened and this side being bulgy. Over here, you see this edge coming in flat and you see this edge up here bulging out. Right. Visualize this whole edge as a continuous line and now here's the hard part start with your eye right here and imagine you come all the way up to this point here but i now want you to visualize what that does behind the leaf here so that that line comes out and continues right here can you do that 
can you in your brain get that line to go all the way through and you can do the same with the center line you see it coming up the middle of the leaf here and you see it continuing on the bottom of the leaf here can you visualize that as a flat line coming all the way through so here is if this is my front line I have attached to that this back line. I don't recommend that people draw the, um, the, the three lines, the center line, the front line, and the back line, and then kind of try to connect them up. My brain kind of gets confused. It is okay to draw this front edge. What is the shape that is being made by that? But then what I switch to is in my brain, I'm gonna look at what is the shape of this top surface. So here it is kind of coming down straight here. Right? And then it is coming up. And notice in here, it changes direction right about there. It comes up and then it's gonna come off in this direction. And then it has a flat surface. This flat surface back here is not made by the edge of one of the leaves. It's made by our seeing the top edge of this kind of curving away from us. Because the center line, remember we have the big side and the small side. You've got your big side over here and your small side over here. The center line is not coming down between these two shapes like we would think of it. So you think you'd find the midpoint here and that's where you were going to come in. But no, <clears throat> it's going to start a little bit closer to this side than you would think. So that it's going to, it's going to slightly mirror this edge. It's going to slightly mirror this edge. And between those two, so more space on this side, less space over here. And especially right up in here, pay attention to what it does right up in there. Okay, it's going to come right i see you kind of tucking it right like that okay now this back edge somewhere behind your field of view is connecting there right we leave it here notice by the way notice that right in here this is not this edge this corner here is not doing this it is not coming up and hitting this at a sharp corner, right like that. This, there's a, you can, can you see it right in here? Turn in, it's turning in, it's rounded right in there. So right in there, you see that round in. Meanwhile, on this edge, it's going to a sharp skinny point. So these two corners, are critical to getting your leaf to roll over. Now, take a look at how far down here. I'm going to roughly put a dot somewhere on here, roughly where this bottom one comes in. And I'm then going to visualize, can, can I get that? I then kind of connect up here. I want that to roughly make sense. This curve where I come off it. Uh, yeah, that's going to. I'm going to come in here, comes in straight, and it's going to angle in. My center line is going to do the same thing. It's going to be from somewhere in here. So roughly kind of coming up. I'm looking at where is it relative to here? Where is it relative to here? What about my leaf veins? Here, I've got these ones coming out towards me, widely spaced.
What about on the far side? Oh, different angle and they're more narrowly spaced. That's so weird. What am I seeing down in here? I'm seeing the hint of these things pretty widely spaced. What about over here? I can't see it, so I'm not going to draw it. And so then, because this is one nice continuous edge, I'm going to write, especially as it comes across here, emphasize this part in here so that it's clear that this is one continuous edge. This line back here, keep it lighter. These parts back here, the heavier your line, the more it will pop into the foreground. So I can have uh, what I'm doing here to draw the leaf at a different shape. Let me just move it to another position. Is I think of it as I have this shape. Uh, whoops, hey, stay still. I, I have this, this, this shape here. I have my more open side and I have my flatter side. I have um, this top corner. Very often I'm going to see it as more rounded. In this one instant, I don't. The more that it turns towards me, the less I see it. This far side over here is much more of a pointed corner. But think of this as a shape. What is the shape of this surface here? Don't think of it as a three-dimensional leaf pointing towards you. Think of it as a big triangle. So when I'm trying to visualize that shape, I'm not thinking curvy leaf, I'm thinking big triangle. Now, this part here connects with, there's, 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 there's leaf down in here, but what is it doing? So this top edge connects it over, and it's another shape that is going to connect somewhere in here. Does that make sense if this far side came down like, like that? Yeah, that does. That, that roughly works. I could have a side doing that. So... What about my mid-vein? My mid-vein, I see it disappear here. And I see it pick up here. Behind the scenes, is that going to make sense? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I have my little leaf here, my big side. If I strengthen this line, especially as it comes across here, right through that area there, that helps this stuff back here feel like it's further away. And then I have this surface here. I might, in the tip of this leaf, also really emphasize this, this brings this whole part of the leaf visually forward. Sometimes people also put just a little bit of detail right there at the leaf tip and it kind of mentally pulls that tip of the leaf forward. That allows me to draw my leaf giving it a three-dimensional look, which brings me to this model. So the way this works is this is kind of the folding point down here. I'm going to try to, I'm going to just sort of lightly pinch this here. And I, what I want to do is to take one Would of my petals. Um, right, you, uh, thank you. Perfect. I'm going to take one of my petals and I'm going to, I'm really going to push the bottom in and roll this around the back so that 
at about the height of this second line here. See how there's a big gap there? I'm going to try to pull it in to kind of close that up so that this pedal comes in and connects right at that line. And then I'm going to put a piece of tape on the back there. So I want to kind of get one pedal overlapping the other. For those of you who made models with me before, this is a new one, and I think it's really fun. It's in the handout, and I get this. Ooh, we're going to have some fun with this. And um, so one thing I can do with this model Grab onto it here. I'm going to zoom out. So one thing I can do with this model is I can tilt it from all sorts of angles and just like I did with that other cone shaped model that I had right here. Um, I can do studies from it. Take a look again at this just this almost unbelievable thing that is happening right here, right here on this bottom edge. We have, whoa, no, I didn't want you to do that yet. Jack, could you do that fold again, please? We had some people miss it. Certainly, certainly. So if I... So I've got these, these, these two limbs here. The one with the tab is going to be on the outside. And so this side here is going to come over this other one. And so I want to make sure they're kind of the inflection point is down there on the bottom. So I'm going to hold those bottoms together. And I'm bringing this together until I get this, these petals coming together at the second line right there. So I don't want to have a big gap there to make this be symmetrical because the rest of them kind of come in at that second line. So I'm going to try to have this come in at a roughly the same place. And then I've got my tab sticking up on the outside. I'm just going to tape that down. So this is the new model. <clears throat> a new toy for all of us. So um, I can just hold this at different angles, and it just helps me practice some of these counterintuitive things that I really see on real flowers. So for instance, look at this goofy negative shape over here, coming down and then straight over. And then along the bottom here, it's almost like there's a flat line. I'm not even seeing a deep groove coming in right here between these two petals. How tempting would it be to draw this flower something like this, where I have on the top, I've got a big petal, and then I've got a big petal sticking out. I've got a big petal here, and I've got these ones sticking out towards me, and I know that they have to have this big groove in between them. How tempting would it be to put this negative space in there because my brain sees these, but I'm not seeing that here. I'm not seeing that here. So this just, and, and look at this, this, see how symmetrical my brain wants to make it here, but really what I'm seeing on the bottom of this flower um, is that I've got a big petal over here and a big petal over here. Well, let's come on over here. And this one is coming up and it's coming down. And then the bottom is swooping over flat and there's a little divot. And then it is swooping over flat to here. And then this is coming up and back in something like that. What? I mean, that's, that is so counter to the way that my brain 
and actually this is even dips down more oh oh hey jack oh this is this is fantastic i'm so sorry to interrupt you we've only got about 10 minutes left and uh, we do have uh, a question for you um have... uh, okay before I, I jump to that let me just sort of sure. finish this okay and then well i might i'm going to make that part for like in, in my grand scheme of things um i was uh, I think we'll have to, at some other point, I'm going to kind of get into shiny leaves and textures. Um, I think I just got so excited about my new models that um, I, uh, that there's, there, there isn't time to do all the things that I plan. But here's, here's what I want people to, uh, what to, to invite people to do with this. So we looked at, we looked at with this, all these cool things that ha start happening when we're tilting a leaf, right? So what I want to invite you to do is not with this one, but with this with this model here. Take once once you've drawn a bunch of studies with it with flat petals, and you've worked a bunch of these geometries. Then take a pencil and wrap it around the edge like that. And you see what I just did? Oh boy, yeah. You can turn this into this very, it kind of has a lily-like quality. Of course, a lily um, so it has six petals on it. This has five. But... If I curl these around, I, so don't, don't do that right off the bat. First, play with it with flat, then curl it. And you're going to get this. And so this, this helps us sort of visualize all these cool things, like things that are curling away from me. I may not see the tips of those flowers. I may, the, my, my little petal may come off and, and have a flattened end out there. Ooh, oh boy. All right, or another angle where I can see part of the bottoms. Um, you know, my, my rounded side, my flat side. Right? My rounded side, my flatter side. So I can I can see all these things together. And it's really, really fun to to to, to play with and explore. And what I thought I would do is just with this model, just kind of to get people started, I'm gonna hold it in a pose like this and just show how I would go about initially framing this in. And then we'll take those questions. So roughly what I want to do is get my brain to think I have a cone. Right. And on these petals, there are things that are kind of curling up and they're curling over. And then this gives me this sort of second ring around here where those curls are kind of coming down to. So the top of it might be in here and then they're coming down. And then I would loosely block in that over here is gonna be leaf number, leaf petal number one, roughly in this area. This center space here is gonna be occupied by petal number two. I'm gonna have petal number three um, way out to the side here. Petal number four, where everybody's kind of coming down to this point here, is out here. Petal number five is going out, out here. So you see I've just loosely, very loosely kind of blocked in some placeholders for my different petals. And then I start to think of each of these petals as the leaf. 
and I'm doing the same thing. So this one that is um, here, right? So what I would think about is like, roughly speaking, you have a round side over here, you have a pointed side over here, and a straight side coming in here. There's, I'm not seeing the tip, I'm gonna flatten that off. I have a big curve here, big curve, more roundy here, and then starting to straighten out. So I'm just going to block that in. And then where in here does this come in? I remember everybody wants to point down here. So this side comes up. And I've got it coming down to the bottom of my pedal. And then what about this far side? That's going to have to connect to this point here where I see that disappear. And down here. So does that work? Yeah, something like that. So I've loosely blocked in pedal number one. I'm going to loosely block in pedal number two. And where does its triangle start? All right? So I will, well, to help me kind of get that triangle in the right place, I'm going to look at the negative space right in here. What is this negative space? See that? The air under here. Oh, okay. So that's roughly, it's roughly this big. And that's going to help me then come up with this. It comes up straight. It has an angle turn. Okay, coming in here. There's a big angle turn. And then it's coming in fairly straight out to here. There's my straight side of that curve. I have, so, and then I have, let's put the top part of this on. Out here, this is the big roundy part. So straight on this side, this far side, I'm gonna round this around. Round, 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 right? And then what about this interior curve here? This this one, it's gonna come, remember that's gonna be coming in here, and I'm gonna come roughly up from here, and that's gonna, so uh, see, I'm, I'm using that to block that in. I'm not worried at, at this point about, like on this edge, I'm going to make this a more kind of strong, confident line, right? No, no, no. I'm, first, I'm just kind of, these are placeholders. And then the drawing will happen later. It might be really helpful for me to put in the center line. Which side is bigger? Big over here, smaller over here. Oh, that's interesting. My default mode would be to put that in symmetrically. So I build in these guidelines, and then I can draw my flower on top of that guide. Now, that being said, what is the question number one? All right. Um, question number one. Actually, I think it's going to be the only question. Uh, no. Su Susan asks, how Hi, does Susan. a thick... I'm sorry? I that? said, hi, Susan. Oh, how does a thick leaf change how it's drawn? Oh, how does a thick leaf change how it's drawn? So let's say we're drawing succulents or something like that. So um, the thicker the leaf, the more interesting this side that points towards you is going to be. So let's say I wanted to turn this into a thick leaf. There's two different things that I want to pay attention to. One is um, here when I'm kind of getting in the, the, the side of the leaf, this would then rather than be the edge of the leaf, this would be, if you can think of this leaf then as the little cross section through here. If I did a little cross section through my leaf here. On a thick leaf, what I've got then is is that right and this line here is this outer line that i see so if i want to turn this into a thick leaf in this part of the drawing 
I want to think of this kind of, let's zoom in on this. So if I wanted to turn this into a thick leaf, <coughs> in here, I'm thinking of there's going to be this upper edge, that's going to be something happening somewhere in here. And so I can have a few little kind of lines like this that are suggesting, look, we're kind of wrapping around. I also, so if I'm doing that with, with sort of suggesting with lines, any kind of line on the surface here, I might have little lines that wrap around, but I can also suggest that with shading. So for instance, if there is sort of a shadow that I've got along here, then that suggests that you're seeing that shadow happens at the inflection point of that thickness in the leaf. And a trick with the shadow is along this bottom edge, you see how I left a little bit of light in there? That's a little bit of reflected light along the bottom edge of the shadow. And I can maybe put a little bit darker in as sort of some core shadow towards the top. And that will help that be more of a convincing shadow. And that's sort of kind of bring that into here Right, so you see out here that gives you this thicker leaf. The place to be challenged to be really pay attention to with thicker leaves. So and down here, right, you'd, you'd have this going on. Right, where here, here's the outside edge of my leaf and then this might be my kind of sort of shadow zone in here. But but here's the challenging part. Right is that notice over here, this heavy line is this line. Over here, this heavy line on the outside edge is this line, right? Because if I think about this leaf curling over, Down in here, I had this heavy line here, that was this. This one over here, that's this one here on the outside. So I get into trouble if, because over here, like this top line, it is harder to see. And this little bottom edge here, it's, this line is easy to see because it's on the outside edge. This one is on the outside edge. The outside edge one, that's why it gets that harder line. Look, I'm the outside edge of this leaf. It's thick. But my thick leaf is kind of coming around here. And there's a tendency for me to want to draw that thick all the way through. And then it gets confusing right in here because I get these two heavy lines here. Or this inside one, I want to be a lighter line. This top one here, I want to be a lighter line. So that means this part in here, where it goes over the curve, there's going to be a switch of which one is saying I'm the outside edge of this leaf. And that is the challenge. So back when I was drawing this as a small leaf, I drew this in as a heavy line all the way over there. So let me lighten that and let's just let's just sort of bring this up. So I'm going to come up here with this outside edge of the leaf of my thick leaf. And, and then it comes over into the leaf there. So see how I've got the outside edge here. And then that's more of my outside edge of the leaf here. Here, this is my outside edge of the leaf. But in here, it's starting to, no, it's not. And, and so what I want to do, and in here, there's the top edge of my leaf. I'm going to kind of connect this little shadow zone up into there. And in here, <clears throat> I want to be careful of drawing this bottom edge in too far. So first I'll do it the way I'm going to suggest, and then I'll kind of mess it up and show you it's really easy to bring this bottom one in too far and kind of how that looks, right? So let's get us over the hump here. Sort of, so down in here, here's the bottom shadow edge of this. Now I'm leaving a little bit of reflected light by in here.
And so I'm having this edge. And if there's if there's any little wrinkles that kind of let's say it's you know a kind of a lumpy succulent, these things can kind of kind of come around the corner and go like, look, we're we're kind of curving in here, just as some things like in here can kind of suggest that edge. If I don't see that kind of texture on my leaf, I wouldn't draw it. Hey, Jack. Yeah. We'd love to stay and play with you all day, but it is a little bit after twelve, so I want to give you one minute just to wrap up anything else you want to say about thick leaves, and then we. <sighs> close out our class today is you any do you have anything else you want to say about this particular um i think i actually managed to kind of it does look thicker for sure it, it does we, we, we gave it thick so the part to be just just realize you've got my edge here my outer edges have flipped right in there and so like right in here is this kind of ambiguous zone and um Notice that if I extend this line too far like this, nah, 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 nah. That's just not right, right? Because I'm then then in this place, no, I'm not seeing that hard edge there. I don't want that hard edge there, and that is the thick leaf. Um, so let me jump back to my other camera. While you're doing that, this is Beth again. I just want to thank everyone for joining us today. I want to say that we'll be emailing a link to the recording from today's class in about a week to everyone who registered. And in that email, we'll also include a list of additional resources from Jack on drawing plants, handouts and some other recordings that we have. And we'll also be including a survey. A survey. We are eager to hear your feedback on today's class and your ideas for next time. Also a reminder that we'd love to see your drawings and notes from class today. Please share them on your socials and use hashtag Wild Wonder Foundation and tag us at Wild Wonder Foundation. And lastly, if you enjoy today's class and you'd like to make a donation or an additional donation, you can do so at wildwonder.org slash donate. So I just want to say thank you. And Jack, if you have any closing remarks. Oh, um, I, I, I guess in, 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 in closing, so they're, 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 they've got all these, these models and things in here. So first, just sort of a, a, a thing about um, uh, drawing. Number one, when you're out there drawing, enjoy just looking at the flower and have fun drawing. Really, 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 really. All, all these like, like, you know, like what's the, the curvy, like all this like, don't get, kind of get out there and like now have like flower angst. But what I do suggest you do is like take some time with these little models and play around with them. And you're going to then reset your brain's expectations of what kind of weird angles your flowers are going to do. And then when you're out there just enjoying the flower, these things are going to be your kind of base understanding of how to kind of put these pieces together. And it makes it a lot easier to draw the flower and just sort of be out there enjoying the flower. Um, the best way to do this is just with pencil miles. So don't think of these as like a, a plant portrait. Another great thing about these flowers is it gets you away. Like I'm gonna just do it. Think of them as studies. Do a bunch of studies and play with them. Or put these on the back of your toilet tank and, you know, as you're having your morning constitutional, your little kind of private moment, just pull these up instead of the little like bathroom reader, have a little plant model and kind of go a close one eye like, oh, like, oh yeah, yeah. And you're just sort of trying to internalize and sort of feel these sorts of angles. And then when you need them, they'll be at your fingertips because you've reprogrammed your brain to think, to kind of look for some of these unexpected things. And then you'll be able to 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 draw what you see, and it's it's not so much about it's not about the drawing trick. It's not about having a pretty picture or something. It's about being in the presence of this incredible flower, and enjoying that. And um, I find that drawing the picture of it really helps me pay attention to it and enjoy it more. For me, having some strategies of how I would approach that makes the process of drawing it easier and makes it kind of the point where it's now looking back at me off the page, kind of going like, I look like that thing. And there's positive reinforcement there. That comes, that um, then frees up more of my brain to ask questions and just be out there at peace with this beautiful, beautiful flower. So you can do this. I'm gonna encourage you to put in some pencil miles, mess around with it, have fun with it. And, um, I would say that that will, um, this will, that will improve both the drawings that you do and the way that you feel about the drawings that you do.
And the final, my final thought is, I am just, I think it's so cool that we, um, that we together started this Wild Wonder Foundation. And we're going to do all sorts of, of, of interesting projects to help spread the love of the natural world um, and stewardship through this process of paying deliberate attention in our journals. This little workshop is just one little piece of that. And there's going to be a lot more to come. So uh, follow what we're doing. And um, I encourage you to get involved with the community. It is so much fun. There's just so much love and joy. And I think that um, you will find that there is, there's a place there for you. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Jack, so much for your time today. And thanks to Brooke and Avea backstage with me, helping keep things moving there. And we really are grateful to everyone for coming today. We hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. And uh, Jack, we'll see you again soon. Oh, we have a visitor. Hey, everybody. What? Um, yep. We'll see you again soon, everybody. Thank you.